what do you, how do you feel the interest in the Bundesliga is, is growing in the U.S.? I definitely do believe that uh, the interest for soccer in the U.S. is uh, growing more and more. And uh, hopefully also for the Bundesliga, uh, especially Bayern Munich has an attractive <laughs> team with a lot of great players and hopefully the people watch it here. Yeah, we've definitely seen kind of a bump simply because there's always been such a, almost a, an American presence in the Bundesliga, going back to Claudio Reyna, myself, and then obviously now with a, a new generation. Do you feel that that has uh, kind, of, kind of helped? Oh, of course, uh, obviously. And we had Björn Glinsmann, yeah. uh, Donovan, and yeah. now we have Chris Richards, uh, yeah. a young player here from the US. Uh, obviously, because people want to follow their national uh, players and their national heroes. And on the other hand, uh, the more uh, I see that uh, soccer, especially in the, in the uh, younger areas, uh, are growing tremendously here in the U.S. And uh, I spoke with Don Garber the other mm -hmm. day. I think we are going up now to 30 franchise yes. teams uh, yeah. in the U.S. So it's growing and growing. Of course, it's not easy when yeah. you have uh, uh, the um, NFL, the NBA, the MLS, uh, the NHL. Uh, but soccer is, uh, I mean, you know, soccer is uh, the biggest sport in the world and sure. it's definitely growing in here in the U.S. How do you feel, obviously, a lot of pride that Bayern Munich has won 10 titles in a row, but is there that little bit that says the league needs to catch up to what Bayern has been able to produce to make the league just that little bit more competitive? Yeah, of course. This is what uh, people say, hey, the Premier League or uh, the Spanish League are mm -hmm. uh, uh, more competitive and you don't know exactly who will win uh, the championship. Uh, but the problem is that uh, to make the league attractive, we cannot slow down. Right. So the others have to come up to be competitive. And of course, we want to win titles. And we have won now the German championship 10 times in a row. But I do believe that uh, the race for the championship in Germany will get uh, uh, more competitive in the future. We have now Leipzig, we have Borussia Dortmund, uh, we have Leverkusen. They are all bringing new players to the roster. And obviously, they want to be the first yeah. to beat Bayern. <laughs> of course. Uh, there's, some, there's some talk that maybe the 50 plus one rule, if that goes away, then it could allow... Uh, maybe some investment in some of those other clubs that could catch up to the tremendous mm -hmm. commercial success that Bayern has had that has then separated them so much from what you guys have been able to achieve. In previous times, I was a fan of 50 plus one because I'm coming from a little club as well when I was a young kid and played there and I always thought, hey, the members should own uh, the club. Uh, but in the meantime, you see more and more uh, investors, uh, even uh, oligarchs or even states are investing mm. in football clubs, be it in uh, France, be it in the uh, Premier League. And I do believe uh, that the clubs should decide by themselves uh, and should have the power to decide by themselves. By the way, we in Munich, we have uh, our own rule, which says seven percent has to belong to the club and only 30 percent can be sold so this is even stricter than the 50 plus one uh, rule and therefore every club should decide if they need more money then they should uh, decide to sell uh, more uh, percentages of the club uh, and if not uh, then less and by the way this always will be uh, decided by the members right. because this is in the statutes uh, uh, of the club club rules so is there a thought process that for Bayern to be that little bit more competitive against the Man Cities, the Liverpools, the PSGs, let's say, that there could be an idea that they would be more flexible on that to allow more outside investment to maybe raise the stake a little bit? So first and foremost, we definitely want to compete with the best European clubs because our aim is to win the Champions League, uh, nothing else. Secondly, we don't need, uh, especially in Bayern, we don't need a more flexible rule because we are happy with uh, the way how we are. Uh, we have a financial very, very solid uh, position, so we don't have any debt. We have a high 
uh, um, investment in our infrastructure, the campus, the Allianz mm -hmm. Arena, mm -hmm. which is completely sold. Uh, we don't have any debt. And uh, as you see on the transfer market, we are still able to act. Uh, and this is quite clear. We want to race for all the titles which are possible, be it Champions League, be it German Championship or German Cup. So if there were certain changes to be made, what would be some of the wish lists that you would have that if you could just make some, some small changes? Where? Your choice. Is it in competition league? Is it in Europe? Is it? What are some of the things that you're seeing as truly a world global powerhouse in this sport that you'd love to just tweak I, a little bit? I do believe that we have to look into the game plans uh, for, uh, and this has to be done by UEFA and FIFA for all our players because uh, the players uh, have so many games in the meantime and the schedule is so tight and especially the year coming with the World Cup uh, in Qatar uh, during the season. And you as a player mm. might know it even better than me. There is no time to rest yeah. anymore. So this year, this summer, we closed our season on uh, May 15. Then the national players had uh, their national games until the end of May, beginning of uh, June. Then they had uh, three weeks rest and then we started with training again. And now we play the next 12 months in a row. And I think this is what we have to look look at it uh, first and foremost for the players and the clubs yeah. that they cannot do more than what they are doing already. And I also do believe for the TV spectators right. we should not over oversell the whole thing. Out of the 17 years that I played in Europe and coinciding with the national team, I'd say probably 13 of those years I was happy if I had two weeks off. Yeah, And I was just very fortunate that I was fairly injury-free and had yeah. some issues. But if you are a little bit banged up, to your point, you really have no time. No, there is no time. And then you still have all the travelings when you play the Champions League and the Cup, mm -hmm. uh, etc. And when I speak to our players, they say enough is enough uh, yeah. uh, because they st the, the body cannot digested anymore, uh, uh, they need a little bit more rest. And I think this will be one of the key tasks for the future that uh, the governing bodies are trying to really put the schedule in place that the clubs and the players uh, uh, can live with it. Well, it would be great to see because there seems to be such a competition for the players. Every FIFA wants their time, the clubs want their Euro, you know, UEFA and the European competitions want more games and more and then Either you have a squad of 40. Yeah, but uh, <coughs> as you rightly say, they all want more. But the one, once the system will explode, I'm right. absolutely correct. Or it goes the other way that we need then a squad of 40 players, but who can afford that? Well, not only that, because you still are going to have your best 11, your best 13 out of that 40. And you're going to demand or your fans are going to demand of course, another championship, see. another run in Champions League. Of course. Uh, yeah. And we also go, as, the, as of today, we go to, to the U.S., we go to right. China, right. because our fans, the international fans, want to see the team as well. And of course, they want to see the stars. Yes. We cannot go with the second team. So uh, it is definitely something where we also, as a club, think, think hard about uh, how we can, can uh, manage the whole schedule. So, yeah, I mean, there was some, with Lewandowski, there was talk as if there's some bad blood between the club and it finally got done. Is it just one of those things or are you just kind of happy it's done? The club's happy with the price and the player's now happy, but obviously a tough player to lose with 40 goals a season. Yeah, first and foremost, let me say that Robert is a great player. He's definitely one of the best strikers which we have in Europe. And as you rightly said, he scored 35 to 40 goals every season. And therefore, it was not easy for us when he came with his request that he want to leave the club uh, because we need uh, replacement uh, for him. And unfortunately, there are not so, there many, are no replacements for there him not right so now. many players yeah. who can uh, play uh, like him. Uh, and therefore, we were hesitant that the beginning and said no uh, you still have a contract uh, for one more year and uh, we want you to play here 
In the meantime, uh, we obviously looked at the market and uh, things have happened. Uh, we uh, contracted Sadio Mane, which is a great, great transfer for us. I mean, he's a world-class player. Uh, we also prolonged the uh, contract with uh, Serge Gnabry, so mm -hmm. we have a lot of strikers now with yeah. Kingsley Coman, Serge, Leroy Zane, mm -hmm. uh, Sadio Mane, Thomas Müller. Uh, and then we were we were open to discuss. Uh, and finally, I think it is now the best solution for all three parties, for Robert, for mm -hmm. us, uh, for Barcelona. They have a great player. We have some money which we can invest in the future. So everything is fine. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.